G'day, how you going? Indianapolis here, your acrylic guru from Australia. Welcome to my video. Before I get started, I just want to get the size on the canvas, get that out the way, because sometimes I forget and I've got to re-edit it. And I'll get some colours going up the screen as well. Uh, there's only about two, four, five colours in here. And I'm going to do a orca, an orca, a whale, a killer whale. Always wanted to do one of these. Uh, so I'm going to do one. And I have a traceable. The traceable will be in the link below. Now, what you do with these traceables, if you don't have any carbon paper, any transfer paper, anything like that, I'm going to show you just how easy it is to transfer it onto your canvas, all right? So without further ado, let's get right into it. And this, this painting is going to be different, but it's achievable. And if you want to do it, you just keep practicing because it's going to make people, once you've done it, they're going to look at it and go, you know what? I like that. It's going to be having that effect on people. So let me show you first how to get this onto your canvas if you're a very new beginner and you just don't have the means to do it. That's a window, okay? So what I've done, I've already transferred it, so it's got red pen on there, but there's your transfer, your, your picture, right? You turn it around on a window and you can see what's behind. And what I've gone and done is I've just simply got a lead pencil and I've scribbled lead graphite over all the lines. So when I turn it over, like that onto the canvas, you can put it there. I've already put mine there and I've masked over it, but I'll just show you. So you've got your lead pencil under there, right? Let's do, I'll do it on the thing here. And whatever I, there's a squiggly line. It transfers it onto the canvas. I don't want to press too much. So I've transferred it on and what I do, I like to use a red pen because you can see where you've been over your traceable, okay? That's just a little thing I like to do, but you just use whatever color pen you've got. Um, once you've done that, I've masked it up. I've used a scalpel and I've cut the edge of it out. You be careful with that. You don't have to mask it up if you think that's too intimidating, just so long as you paint your background a bit lighter. So when you're transferring it on there, you're going to see your lines. Now I want to do the water around it first. This, I've got a line here because that's pretty much going to imitate the surface of the water. And down here it'll probably come a bit darker so you know what's going on in my mind. Now I'm going to start off with some craft paint. There's no retarder in this. This is just to prime up my already gessoed canvas cloth. So as when I put these watercolors on there, they're going to merge the way I want. Now I've just got phalo turquoise, which is a darker turquoise. I've got some lighter turquoise and some cerulean blue. So get this all primed up in this craft white. Now it's a very dry day here. I might just have to put a snippet of retarder in there because it's such a dry day here. I just don't want this to clam up on me. I didn't put too much, so I pretty much get all that over my canvas real quick. You don't have to paint as quick as me. You can paint in sections if you like. I'm always putting myself under the pump because I'm just that high incline, I suppose. All right, got all that snotted on there. Now I'll just stroke it left and right, get all the lumps out, so when we put the other colours in there, they'll be nice and artistically artful looking. There we go. Okay, I want to get my cerulean blue next and just paint the whole canvas in that colour. I'll start from the bottom. It can come, if anything, the bottom of this is going to be darker than the top. Crisscross it all in that white is letting it become more of a, in my opinion, a real color, not so um, stark and raw onto that white dry canvas. So I'm gonna try and get all this pushed on. See how that craft white underneath allowing this to move real quick. And this putter on a brush don't muck around either. Get all that stroke now. Now look around there, the tape, really get it into there. Because I'm doing it this way, that way I'm allowing myself to sit the orca on top of my background and give it a bit more realism. Okay, I've done that. I've got all the blue exactly where I want it. Now I've got some phthalo blue. I want to darken up the rest of that cerulean I have there, just so as I can get the bottom half darker. And if I want, I can even go darker again if it's not turning out as dark as I want on my canvas. So 
So I want to go to about maybe this point here. So let's get this on there. Oh yes. And then just get that. Now, if anything, keep these brush strokes left and right. Okay, left and right. There we go. I'm going to stroke that and get that darker, just feathering up into that cerulean blue now. There we go. I'm pushing it up if I feel it's too much in a straight line. Now I'm getting some more of that color and I want the top a bit darker, but I want to keep a light band within the middle so it's going to distinguish the surface of the water because this is what we're going to have our turquoise values mixed in this. So I'm just going stroking left and right and this is why well, I, we could see at the end of the video just how dark this turned out and if it would have been okay to put your traceable on top of these colors here. There's about there. Now see here, I wouldn't mind it a little bit darker. So I'm gonna pinch some of the darker turquoise and just mix that with what's on my brush, which is a cerulean blue and the phthalo blue. And if you don't like it this dark, you don't have to do it this dark. I just want it very dark down there. How's that looking? Not too bad, it's not the darkest. I might add a bit more phalo into that mix as well. I'll just put a bit more phalo into that turquoise cerulean colour. How's that looking? Oh yeah. So what I might do is just come off the sides there like that. Get it on there and just pull that through now. I'm liking that. That's quite darkulatingly dark, isn't it, I suppose? Yeah, it's indicating depth of the ocean, the depths of the ocean. Okay, we've done that far. It's quite wet still. Now, I've got a few different brushes here, mainly flats to slither in some of the water movements, and I've got a little scrumbling brush. It's like a little blending brush, but yeah, that make yourself one of them, find one. And we're gonna get the turquoise now and put in there. And you can just keep mucking with this until the cows come home, it's up to you. But then once we finish that water, we're gonna peel that tape off because I don't wanna bore the living buggery out of you. I don't want this to be too long. So what I wanna do, I wanna get a round brush, a bit of a thick script line. I'll get some, let me get some water there. I'll wet that other stuff just in case I need it. I always do that, it's a bit of a palette habit. I do. Now what I want to do, I'm, I'm loading this brush up. Uh, uh, why? Uh, I'm going to show you right now because in your water you have different layers of movement under or on top of the surface and I want to use these for the long ones and then I'll use the flat brushes for the other ones. So I did have with me, there he is about there, so I want this about there. Okay and over there. So what I want to do is pretty much get these in bands, let's not go too fat. Okay, I'll just, I'm twisting it. I want them to stay solid. Now you can go up and down. I'll go right to the mammal there. But keep them level, because this is your pretty much your horizon line. I'm gonna come here. These are scalloping all over the place. You want them nice and thin. Uh, nice and thick, whatever, whatever. Uh, we'll do a couple of thin ones here, if I can. There we go. Now I can get a th thick one, twist it, let it come thin. Come a bit thicker, whatever. Practice this procedure. It's just a procedure. Every painting is a procedure. And it's that easy. Now I'm gonna go real thin here. And then maybe twist it, get a bit thicker there, and then thin it down there. Now this brush ain't the best. It's a snotty, dirty, rotten, cheap one from the shop, but it does what it does, so I'm using it. I like to use what I think beginners only can get their hands on. See here though, the edge of them. Try and put some pizzazz into that and get them a little bit sharper. Let's see there, there you go, look at that. Okay, I'm grabbing a flat brush now and I wanna do some on this side. I'm grabbing my bullshit stick as well so I can get some pretty, get over there you, 
some good lines. So now we're coming from the other side of the mammal. So I'm just wetting my brush. And then I'll show you how we can use a flat brush as well. Now I've given that paint, the canvas, a bit of a dry, not a full dry, it's a rubbery dry. And we're gonna come pretty much, we wanna try and create thick and thin ones. That's why I dried it, because see, I can push into the canvas without it ripping up the white paint. That flat brush is a bit too big, so I'm gonna grab another one. Nice thin one, thick one there, coming thin again. Look at that, I wish that was more sharper. Now I've just swapped to another liner brush because that I can lay it across the actual canvas like this without ripping into the paint, twisting it. You can see what I'm after. is long, thick, thin, thick, thin kind of bands. And we can probably come from thin, thin and I'll, I can bring this wider. That's what it's for, eh? You want, you want a more different. Just some breaking up, some not quite making it to the party. They had too many pre-drinks. We want to get some bigger stuff now up here. Like, not too big, but I'm using this one just getting some bigger pieces like that on top of the water. Oh, oh. That's why I dried the, um, the actual water itself. Now keep these, they can sort of move, but keep them level, okay? Bits, sharpen them up. Put your finesse in there. Because some of these are big real big now, but keeping them that shape with the surface of the water, because water sits flat. And it's coming off here, real. This is just that lighter turquoise that I've got. So we're just pretty much gonna do this over the whole water until we're satisfied with the finish of it, okay? And come down, and just so long as you finish it off with lines and tails like that. Now I have mixed a little bit of white with that turquoise colour and probably around here I want a band of just probably very skinny shimmery light coming through the water as well just indicating it because on the back of our orca here it's going to have those white squiggly lines so his back's about there so I just want some of this, I can't see probably with the camera anyway. Oh, so. All right. Okay, I've given it a bit of a dry and I'm gonna, I'm, I always use a pointy object like one of my knives to get from the edge, just so as I can pull me tape back. Okay, I'll start from the bottom because that's where I started with the actual layout of it, I think. Now, if you feel this background, you can paint this colour background and try just a little test transferring some lines on it and see if you can see them. And if you can, well, don't even worry about taping up your orca like I did here because it is a bit painstaking. You just paint your background light enough so you can see your pencil lines, your transfer lines. So once you've finished painting your water, you dry it completely, put the traceable on top and transfer the line. Now I'm just going to just knock some of those ridges down, if I can. Okay, now I've got some white out of the tube there and some cerulean blue. Now for the whites of the fish, I don't want it to be pure white, so we're gonna slowly taint it. 
and get our real bluey white there we go now that's pretty much the white and I need a probably a just a darker value of that again but you know what I'm not quite getting enough so what I'm going to do is grab some impasto medium okay this stuff here I have talked about it in other videos what this stuff does this increases the volume of your paint <clears throat> without changing the color so you might have mixed up a lot or not enough and think oh no I've got to mix up more just have some of this on standby and it'll see how it's increased the volume bloody marvelous stuff that I didn't know about it until I found out about it now I've got enough to make a slightly darker value of that so this is a bit of mixing involved learn how to mix colors as well it is important so I want to get like let's say here don't need too much of this darker value and this color over here that we had with the um, turquoise and the phalo blue and whatnot just grab a little bit just a little bit and start getting this to a darker value okay I was going to use black but black will probably gray it okay so there's our whites for the white colors of his body so I'm going to start off with the mid-tone so we've got a mid-tone a light tone and a darker tone I'll start with the mid-tone and then I can put the darker values where I feel they need to be and then highlight it with the pure white so where's I'm just going to paint all these white bits white first or this color first now use a flat brush a detailed brush whatever brush you got see these are the finer bits that's why I'm painting them first because when I block in his black and shadow that these can be cut into their normal size so it doesn't matter if I go over me lines a bit see there and I'll, they'll have a couple of coats uh, where's the white next oh I better make sure I get the right spot white so pretty much all this chin area so I'll get it on there and we'll get it get your edge perfect right there I'm going to give this all a light coat then I'll come back to it okay and I'll do this bit white this bit white and under his tail here white so let me put this coat on so I dried that gave it another coat I dried it a little tip when you if you lose any lines like I lost a little bit here I'm just did that to show you I got my pencil and I just slightly put them back so when it comes time to doing the fin I know where the lines are sometimes you got to add them back now we're going to this darker color and we're just going to add shadow where we feel these whites need it because the whites have some darkness in them as well so we'll get all this color in there I want that right across his line there there we go and I just want bits of this it's probably a little bit too right I'm just pulled a little bit more of the the phalo and the darker mix in there there we go so we're going to just pretty much do some of those wafer squiggles all over that white bit don't worry if you go over the line there because the black's going to cover that up and when we put the white highlight on here it's just going to make it look nice now from his belly I want a bit of dark under here so what I want to do is just grab me brush on the tight bit there I can't go over that line because that's the base of his belly and I want to kind of bring that up bring it up bring it up bring it up let it fade into there and if it's too much you put the other color back you just keep going backwards and forwards get some I'm keeping it the shape of his sausage body he's got a he's got a he's got a sausage body all right there we go because when we highlight all this and do everything else it's gonna look all right people will go boo shit now there's a little bit of a 
muscle there within his tail so I want to scramble that in if I can just some over there pull it back through that lighter blue from his jawline I want to come down it's pretty dark up on his lip and just kind of where's my brush get on there I want to scramble that into there fade it down just subtle bits coming around there and maybe some in here as well because we got light at the top reflecting into all of this see what I'm doing it's just nothing you can do that squiggle it you wait till it's all finished it's just going to give you that um, bullshit look you know bit under there and that'll do it for this color now I've dried everything I've got the pure titanium white now I've got a there's a little bit of water I sprayed there just to inculate the paint for good transferring find a brush I'm just using this brush but find a brush that's going to work for you and now we want to get our nice whites into this get some that's pretty much just going to refract through all here with bands like that I hope I'm not destroying anything there by leaning on it so this is you could have just done these simple white if you wanted to but this you can up the ante if you're a beginner some beginners can go to this level here this is a get in advance beginners this painting but by all means just because you're a beginner doesn't mean you can't try it because trying is practicing and practicing makes perfect yeah, I'll get some of this white here as well and this is pretty much Got his whites in here also. Uh, where are we? I'll, I'll probably get a, a bit of white radiating up here just because I want to, just to show you. Pure white there. Now his tail's pretty much underneath, so doesn't need any I'll just put a bit there just for the art's sake though okay there we go and when I do the black colors will really enhance all this here I just want to get a bit continuum from where that might be coming down there along here now to paint the killer whale I've got some more titanium white here and his body's pretty much black, but I'm not just going to paint it black. No, I'm going to get the mid-tone of black. So I want to get this, I maybe put too much white in there. No, that's all right. We want a light black, pretty much. We don't want it grey looking, we want it black looking. And we're going to paint the whole thing in this colour. And then we can get the black, <coughs> the actual black colour and put the darker values over this and then the lighter values over that back up here we want these nice and sharp so let's get that edge this paint is blobby as buggery so i'm gonna hear the water washing i'm washing it in the water and then i'm gonna reload it so it's not so blobby and you watch the tip of my brush now a hey, presto you got a nice sharp look at that now, when you're doing this, put the kettle on, have a cup of tea, take your time, there's no rush. Because at the end of the day, you're going to have a magnificent piece of art. And so you, at home, you get to turn your thing around. I've got a camera right on top, right in my ear hole here, and I've got to work sort of sideways. See, I've got to use the side of the brush. If you use the tip, for cutting in it's just a bit easier I'm going to use the side of it here I'm just trying to get this dorsal fin done is that what it's called a dorsal fin and then I want to 
go around that white blob there just so as you get an idea of how it's going to look oh it's not breaking up get a bit of water in that so it's going to transfer nicely come around here and where that black line on his back joins the white, don't have them all crooked. At the moment they're crooked because I'm still jostling around here trying to show you what to do and then I can get right into it. And see here, I'm gonna brush out the strokes as well, any blobs, put pride in your work, brush them out. So I will speed this process up just so as it's not gonna bore the living buggery out of you all there. Oh yeah. Given all that black another coat so there's not any transparent brush strokes in there and I want to give some bits of darker shadows here before I detail it as well just a bit darker so maybe there maybe a bit pointing down from there some because I extended that black line there but I do want a bit of distinction in there just some distinct from this black try and oh there we go yeah just wiggle it like you're nervous and where are we some amount into the black now where are you come on uh, maybe a little bit darker here not too much just coming from the black uh, about here somewhere so we're just pretty much detailing all here don't need too much there I've scratched this edge of the line of that black line there just to give it a bit more realistic instead of it being a solid line almost done now the next procedure just wash that brush out that we had the mid-tone black in okay and I'm just going to get the straight black now and I want to just put the depth in there so I want to get like let's say from here real dark bit coming down there yeah and then once we put all the highlights on this my goodness it's going to make you go wow um, we want a lot of, oh, I better come under this way. There, and just let it break up into there like that, around his sausage body. Get around his sausage body. Bit more there on his, there we go. I do need a, Tight in there a bit. Where else can we go? 
probably come right down this fin here a bit because this fin's going to start creating 3D dimension now with these darker colours. You'll see as it comes into play, right against his body there, around there, and I'll just kind of let this break up and merge into that fin there. So we need that to go on. Let it fade. Get a bit of darkness right along here. If I could see. <laughs> there we go, look at that, yeah. Now you can see what the, the darker value is doing with this mammal a bit across here. Right across there if I can. Sharp on the top and then it can break down through the mass of his body, all right? Pretty easy. Boom, break it down, break it down. Break it down, break it down. There we go. Oh, you don't want any stupid lines there. Long there and follow the shape of his sausage body. Now don't worry, see I went a little bit into that white. If that happens, you just panel beat it later with a bit of white again, don't stress. Get some darker values radiating up here where the light's not hitting it. So when we get the light on there, where are you? If you know what I mean, probably all around here as well. From there. All right, just to finish it, I'm not sure what I'm doing with that eye yet. We're gonna get the white glazing over his body. Now you don't want to use pure white. We got the colors down here. We could probably go for this middle range one that we had. Just get it on our flat brush that you've been using. And we need to radiate it. So I want to get at least just something distinct on his nose there like that. So this is the mid-range. If it's not enough, we can highlight it with the white. And I want to get some bands. Boom. Boom. And maybe, where's, where's our eye? Probably a bit more here. There we go. Where's here? Get something creasing down to there. This will bring these sort of paintings home. And we're gonna come, get some more paint on your brush, you silly Billy. Now see these darker blue bits? We wanna continue there from where they are. Just like that. Don't overdo these, just see how I'm doing it. Just pretty much go, oh yeah. So I'm joining those ones up to those darker ones in the white there. I'm just every now and then looking in my monitor to see how it's looking. Now we've got a lot of little... On his, is that the dorsal fin? I'm pretty sure it is, isn't it? We've got a lot of scallopy, diamondy shaped ones coming just down this back side of it because I'm trying to, if anything, keep this in perspective. He's sort of coming towards us at the 10 o'clock position on the canvas there and then we're getting some bits of this coming down i want some real faded ones i don't want them very loud i don't want them very bright i don't want them very watery and wet there come on it's a matter of always loading that brush up and getting right into it boom this dorsal fin we've got some creating the shape of that okay down there. You could have a little speck just on there. And see what this is doing. Right along there. Looking in my thing there, that's it, that's that's fine. I'll get some down there. Some down here. Boom boom boom. Something can continue out there. 
There's a lot of it there going on. And then I will grab the white and we'll put some even whiter ones on, okay? I've got the darker value of that white that we mixed, so it's a bit more bluer, you know, this bluey color bit. And I am putting, it's too watery, don't be too watery in. I am putting, get some more on there. Uh, bit more of this because I don't want it too white so these blue bits there they're sort of tracing out on here as well get it mixed up there my goodness because that's a bit too white for me I'm going over some of that white stuff with this blue that way when I do put the pure white on it it's just going to make it snap and pop and come right at you now, where are we? now all that white middle tone the lighter value so i've got the the middle tone that i put on there that's allowing an undercoat for this bits and pieces all around the place there coming from there where were those ones coming from there okay i'm just grabbing the pure white and i have it on my script liner now i might want to get a little bit around there I'm just trying to work out where I feel it might need some actual, there's not a lot white there. I'm just trying to make sure me whites where they've got to be is still white. So they're there, just piercing through everywhere. And with the eye, I've just grabbed that dark a bit. I'll grab some of the gray that we mixed as well, the mid-tone, and darken it up. Because I didn't know what I want to do with his eye, but I just want it sort of like that. I've pretty much colored it in. Now I'm gonna really add some lighter value paint to that white, but it's very gray. Let's see. And we'll get some kind of representation of an eye there. Yeah, I just can't quite get it. I don't know what I'm doing. I'll try a little bit of pure white there just to see if it's gonna help. Just put an autograph on here and whack a frame on it. Now be sure to check out the links in my description below. I want to thank all my patrons who support my content. Much appreciated. Message me on Facebook if you want to buy this painting or any other of my paintings or prints. And all my blending brushes that I use in my skies. And we'll just get this on there and we'll get Steve's little, those of you don't know, I do put a little paw print of Steve's footprint there. So we'll whack the frame on there. And that's not too bad. We got an orca swimming in the ocean. Um, we could have put some bubbles in there, but I didn't. It's He hasn't done a dive. He's just swimming in there looking for his partner or maybe a dolphin or someone to attack who knows but you can do that well that was a fun exercise wasn't it looks all right in the frame too be sure to message me below if you have any questions you want to ask and they get addressed in the following friday night live uh, check out my links and thank you once again for all my patrons and the people that follow my channel and if you like what i'm doing you tell your friends but if you don't you tell everybody goodbye good luck Good on you.